Welcome everybody to the Rye Town Council meeting of September 26, uh, 2018. Please rise and Chief Conway, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. Call the roll. <laughs> Councilperson Lindsay Jackson. Here. Councilperson Thomas Nardi. Councilperson Jill Axelrod. Here. Councilperson Anthony Baxter. Here. And Supervisor Gary Zuckerman. Here. Uh, first item, of course, is adoption of the minutes of August 21st. Uh, if there are no objections, corrections, uh, may I have a motion and a second? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, our first agenda item is a presentation by Assembly Member Amy Paulin. Welcome, Amy, um, to uh, discuss our current response to the Federal Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and what we and other municipalities are currently doing. The floor is yours, Assemblywoman. And, yeah. And thank you for coming and joining us. Uh, well, thank you, and thank you for being uh, one of only three municipalities that actually adopted the charitable fund uh, in enough time before the proposed rules and regs scared so many off. Uh, so you may or may not know, uh, but when Congress was contemplating uh, their law last December, there was a white paper written by a group of law professors around the country uh, refuting uh, what Congress was about to do and, gi and giving ideas of how uh, we can, as states, uh, avoid uh, falling into that. And one of the proposals was setting up these charitable funds. Uh, that white paper was forwarded to me. I um, took the liberty of doing a one house or a, uh, a, a bill uh, uh, that was later folded into the state budget, allowing for municipalities and and school districts to establish the same fund that was described in the white paper for uh, states. There are four states that have uh, done, have taken action, uh, New Jersey, New York, uh, California, uh, and uh, one other. Connecticut, <laughs> Connecticut right. Uh, only three have allowed uh, municipalities and school districts, though, to establish funds. California is a statewide um, income tax only. New Jersey only has a uh, local uh, and then Connecticut is similar to us. So uh, going forward uh, we recognized that we were uh, going to eventually have IRS proposed regs to uh, go alongside the um, the ultimate uh, or the law that was passed last year uh, or this year and the um, the proposed regs came out in August and the proposed regs we believe, uh, after talking to uh, the tax bar, tax lawyers, is arbitrary and capricious, and there's a winnable uh, lawsuit when those proposed regs are finalized. So currently, uh, the process is that, just like rulemaking at a local level, there's rulemaking at the federal level requires common period. So the common period is due October 11th, then there's a formal uh, public hearing, so to speak, um, November 5th. Following that, uh, we will see final regs adopted, and there could potentially be litigation uh, um, after that, but the final regs would have to uh, include these arbitrary and capricious things. So the first step is addressing uh, the arbitrary and capriciousness of the proposed rules and regs, and we believe that they're arbitrary for two reasons that I'll mention. One, the IRS never considered uh, the local municipal uh, taxes to be services rendered, so that's a change. Uh, and it's not a change in the law, because the law that they passed didn't really talk about that. The IRS is taking the liberty of, of, of almost doing that. So that's one arbitrary piece of it. The second uh, is that 
uh, following the proposed rules and regs, about three days later, they clarified them, and they're allowing businesses to uh, uh, to take the deduction, but not individuals. And you know, some believe that uh, that some of the other states that have established tax credits are primarily businesses uh, that are contributing, so that would allow those tax credits to continue. Um, but we in this area would not have that um, uh, have that liberty because it's individuals who are uh, we don't have tax credits uh, for uh, parochial schools we have uh, we rely on the state um, deductions so uh, what does that mean it means that our middle class and our upper middle class our lower middle class for the most part anybody who's paying taxes in the range of about seventy five thousand dollars you know a tax a taxpayer earns that to about five hundred thousand dollars are going to be paying enormous um additional taxes and it's going to really jeopardize our quality of life which is why you took the initiative you did to allow um, the uh, charitable fund to exist so um so what are we doing we are forming a coalition uh, other coalition members so far uh, and we're hoping that, you know, the town of Rye will be one of them after tonight. Um, but so far we have the counties of Westchester and the county of Suffolk who have agreed to it. Uh, Nassau is in process. We're hoping they will agree as well, but they're still, they haven't reached the point of passing their own resolution yet. Uh, at the state level, we have NISAC, the New York State Association of Counties, the Association of Towns, uh, the school superintendents. Um, 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 the, um, uh, the school business officials are contemplating it, as is NICOM, as is the School Boards Association. Uh, the, um, uh, and the, we've really just gotten this together in the last week and a half, so that's why we're, you know, we're speeding up to react October 11th, but uh, we have a lot of groups that have to go through their process. At the municipal level, we have, uh, we have so far who've passed the resolution. Uh, the um, North Castle, uh, um, Newcastle, uh, I mean North Salem and Newcastle, and we have many others that are going to be putting it on their agenda, including Ossining, uh, Scarsdale. Uh, we have commitments from the school district of Pelham, uh, the school district of East Chester, and the uh, Pleasantville school district just uh, just passed their resolution um, just last night. So we are, you know, moving along. We expect more partners. There's also two, um, uh, Madison in New Jersey and Somerset in New Jersey. Both are, uh, we expect to pass resolutions. So we're teaming up with other states. We're working in cooperation with the Attorney General's office in New York. We're working in cooperation with the Governor's office. And we expect to file comments on behalf of primarily Westchester, but also including others as well. So that's the, um, that's the crux of it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Just one comment. Bedford has it on its agenda tonight ah, as well. Bedford. I should have looked. I brought my phone so I could look at my text. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, so we have Ossining, Rye, of course, Madison, East Chester School District, um, and, um, and Bedford, as you mentioned. Yeah. And these are all essentially the same resolution. Yes. Um, adopted with a name change. Right. And uh, uh, I know that uh, I had sent out to my council and to the other uh, supervisors uh, and other officials, local officials, a commentary on the excellent presentation by uh, Baker McKenzie, the law firm, last week uh, for us. And there is a video that I also sent out of a subsequent presentation, and I've asked Debbie to post it on our website so that anybody could see it. Uh, the law firm that is handling this basically <coughs> pro bono, there may be small charges for expenses, which is reflected in the resolution. But this is a firm that specializes in this kind of work. They made a pre presentation that um, uh, actually will knock your socks off if you see it. They are really, really good. And uh, we're hopeful that, um, that this will come to fruition and that we will s ultimately save Rye Town and Westchester taxpayers in the millions of dollars in uh, in tax deductions. All right, it really matters for the um, for the taxpayers. Yeah. So, any other questions? Yeah, it's Assemblywoman Paul, and I want to thank you for your efforts in this, um, and thank you for coming here this evening to discuss this with us. 
The other question I would have was, would this prevent Rye Town from subsequently submitting its own comments, or? Um, it wouldn't prevent Rye Town from submitting comments, but we're theoretically going to be represented by Ma Baker McKenzie, so they will be presenting on our behalf, and they're they're the experts in the in the right. field. Right, and I should add that um, because of the cooperation that all the tax professors and the law firms had in creating the ideology that we went forward with, uh, their Proskauer is also involved. They're um, a prominent, very prominent firm in Manhattan, and uh, they're representing us as well as. Um, and the, uh, some of the law professors are also involved. Um, uh, Daniel Hemmel, who originally was from Scarsdale and now is a university professor at Chicago, goes back and forth, is also very involved. So I think that what we'll see is a very, very um, uh, professionally done comment, uh, group of comments that we can be proud of. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming here. And especially thank you for leading this effort in the Assembly, along with Assemblyman uh, Buckwald. And with the support, of course, of our own Steve Otis. So uh, with that, if there are no further questions, I'd like to call up the resolution. Um, you've all had a chance to read it, uh, sent out much earlier. And uh, may I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second, please. Yeah, I'll second. Thank you. If there are no further comments, uh, Hope, please call the roll. Mm -hmm. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Baxter? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. And thank you all. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, Assemblywoman. She has many other meetings to go to. <laughs> Our next uh, item is a presentation on the summer internship uh, program. Uh, it's an overview, and that will bring up our valiant internship leads, Dave Thomas, Alexander Payan, and Greg Arcaro. Which one of you is taking the lead on this? I'm going to start. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm the most tired. <laughs> so I want to welcome everybody here from uh, our council uh, persons, um, the great staff at the town of Rye our employers, especially in our interns. And um, I've had the pleasure of working with the town of Rye and, and most of you folks for a while, so I'm very happy to be here. Uh, this is what, our eighth year, ninth year? Eighth year. Eighth. eighth year of the internship. We've had well over 100 interns go through the program. And um, of all the things that I, you know, I'm involved in, this is probably uh, the most gratifying. So I'm going to start off the presentation. I mean, this program, uh, one of the best things about it is that it gives our interns a really uh, good idea of what it is to actually work at a job. And these, these are high school students. So this is their first foray into the job market. We try to make it as professional as possible. We try to, to, try to instill in them that there is a, a way to go to work, a way to show up, and a way to conduct themselves in a place of business. And we've had great success at this, and our employers are some of the best people in the town of Rye. Not only do we have the uh, town of Rye staff and the departments, including the supervisor's office, the clerk's office, the tax receiver, assessment. We also have Village of Porchester, police department, Chief Conway is here, um, uh, the... Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Dave uh, Burns Advisory Dave Group. Burns Advisory Group, the Senior Center, and, and we'll go through all of these folks uh, as we go through. So on our first slide, we have our town's 2018 summer internship. 21 high school students participate in one-week job readiness. Now, this job readiness is not just, you know, come in and, and you know, this is what you're going to be doing. We actually try to instill in them the idea that this is a professional workplace, this is your chance to go in and distinguish yourself, put up a good impression, and also how to conduct themselves in a business atmosphere. And a lot of things we go through, comportment, resume writing, um, uh, dress, 
uh, writing skills, interviewing skills, and that's one of the most important things is the interviewing skills. We actually have them interview and, and, um, and, and we have these uh, mock interviews with each other. So they get the chance to actually talk and speak like they're in an interview. And then uh, the uh, four-week internship involved each intern working with a total of 60 hours with one of the following 14 employers. As you see there, Burns Advisory Group, Dave Burns, this is what, your third, fourth year, Dave? My second. Your second year? So it, seems <laughs> it only seems that long. Uh, Carver Center, Forever Families Through Adoption, Michael Goldstein, Ex Esquire, uh, State, State Farm Insurance, Sustainable Porchester Alliance, Town of Rye, the Assessment Office, the Clerks and Tax Office, Supervisor's Office, the Village of Porchester Code Enforcement, Planning, Police, Senior Center, and the Village Manager. So this is a long list of, of uh, uh, businesses and, and, and municipalities that are involved in this program. And here's a list of our interns. And as you see, that's where their, uh, their names, the village they are, are from, and their employer. And a lot of these interns have been with the same employer for a couple of years. And the employers actually come to the program and say, I want this individual, you know, we'll interview, but this, this is the person, you know, that we want. We've worked with them before, and they're successful at it. And, and it's really sort of a bidding war when it comes to the interviews on that Friday, because there are... And, and, and this is not only for the employers, it's for the interns as well. They prefer certain employers as well because they are familiar with them. They know the routine. And also because the employers actually go into the interview and they impress the interns and the interns go in and impress the employers. So with this interview process, it really does match these uh, uh, folks up very well. So. I, I won't read the name. We have a couple here. We'll give out some uh, some certificates a little bit later on. Here's our second screen, and uh, we had 21 altogether, which is I think the most we've had. Yeah, absolutely. This is the most we've had in the eight years that we're doing it. And um, uh, at first we thought it was a little too much, but it, it actually turned out to be a little bit easier because we had a lot of people return and take the lead and really show the other uh, new incoming. Um, interns, you know, the ropes, and, and sort of put them at ease and say, hey, this is not going to be crazy, it's cool, and don't be too nervous. So we've had some leaders come through the program. So that was one of the best things about it. Um, I just want to point out there's a village of uh, PC Police Department. Chief, this is what, third year, second year? Uh, I believe it's the third year. This is the third year. The chief does one of the best things. Did you take him to the morgue this year? No. <laughs> you know, sometimes. <laughs> you know, everybody wants to work for the police department. We have a couple of, uh, including one of my neighbors, um, who worked for the police department. And he's one of our, uh, really, the most, um, he's, he's one of our favorites, uh, the chief is. So I want to thank him. Uh, the interviews. Now, we hold these interviews on the last Friday of the job readiness work um, shop. It's about two, two and a half hours, and because we had so many interns, and we want to thank the employees for sitting through, but it seems like we, we only had five minutes for each intern to speak with each employer, and it's sort of a round robin. So they all go through, and we have a bell, and it's sort of like speed It's like dating. speed dating, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, as you see, some uh, most of the employees, that's Sustainable Porchester table on your left there, and there's the chief there on your right. And then we, uh, we asked our employers and our interns to take a photo during the six weeks just so that, you know, uh, we can see what they were doing and how they were uh, uh, comporting themselves. Uh, Sustainable Porchester on your left, my wife would have been here, Joan Thomas, who uh, who headed that group, and she says hello to all her interns. And uh, they had a wonderful time. And then uh, Andrew Storino, Andrew, you here? There he is. Where was that? Where, who are you, a state family for? Families for adoption. Yes. Oh, Forever Families, oh. One of his uh, colleagues. Forever Families, as you know, um, they, uh, you still use in Rye Town Park for your? You're always under construction. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, there's, there you go. 
next year. Next year? Okay. In Crawford Park, right? Crawford, Crawford, Crawford Park. Park. Yeah, they're, they're an underpass. They've been, uh, what, four or five it'll years? Be, well, since I was Michael, it'll before. be beautiful next year. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. And there's Aaliyah James. Aaliyah has been with the planning department. They refuse to participate unless they get Aaliyah. That shows you basically how well they like her. There's Marcella with um, Mr. Goldstein. Christina Vargas, who worked with uh, Mr. Burns and the Burns Advisory Group. And you see that uh, you know it's, it's office work, and we encourage our employers to have prepared tasks for the interns to do so that it's not just busy work. They become a part of the office. They're including in, included in a lot of things that regular interns wouldn't be included in. And uh, Michael Loha, he was with. Um, oh, he was. You had him this year. Yeah. Oh, great. So how was he? Good job. Everybody loves working with Hope. Uh, Jaysha Gooden was with uh, Debbie, and uh, oh, at the assessment. I haven't been in the office in a while, so you got to forget. <laughs> and Shia Asia, raise your hand. How'd you like it this year? <laughs> she, I always kid her. She's very shy. But she kind of jumped out of her shell, and that was one of the things this also does. It gives our interns confidence. Um, I think that's my cue to jump away. Is that July 9th? No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Our next presenter, Alex Payan. Alex? Yes. All right. Thank you, Dave. So, uh, David, thank you so much. Right Who's the microphone, uh, Alex? Let's see if this, you guys can hear me? So, my part of this presentation is going to be the evaluation piece. So, for the next couple of slides, we're going to be reviewing the intern evaluation, specifically with the job readiness workshop. So, here we see how the interns rated the workshop session. So it's a top two box is actually good. You can see that interview with, with employers worth uh, 85%, on the job skills, another 88%, I'm sorry. And then overall um, workshops, 94%. So we've been running this program for eight years now. So we do have the historical data going back to 2011. And basically it's been the same pattern through the years. So it's by far the interviews with employers, it's, it's a home run, basically. Here we have some verbatims. So we asked our interns, what activities did you find most helpful? I'm just gonna read a couple. The hands-on activities were the most helpful. The activities where we wrote down our skills and gave reasons why we should excel at a similar job. The gym activity, practice speed interviewing. So we did a, a series of mock uh, speed interviewing, speed dating, if you will, at the gym and at, at the Salvation Army. And uh, we had a list of about 55 different questions, the most common questions that are asked in an interview, and we just went at it for about 10 plus minutes. Now we're gonna switch gears to employer evaluations. So we asked our employers, did you participate in the town summer internship program prior to this year? The vast majority said yes, it was 85%. The new employers this year, we have Forever Families through Adoption, thank you so much, the Goldstein Law Firm, and the Village of Port Chester Code Enforcement. We also asked them, how would you rate the interview session? About almost half said 46%, which is good, it's very good. So there's still some work that we need to do, so to get that, uh, our, our rates up to excellent. How do you rate your experience with a four-week internship? Uh, Two-thirds cited 62%. Then we asked, how would you rate the interns? And then we had um, a list of attributes. So from left to right, we have attendance, punctuality, uh, ability to learn uh, the work, communication with a supervisor, communication with the coworkers, communication with clients, attitude, and dress. So here you see that attendance, punctuality, and ability to learn to work um, are 85 plus. So the areas where we need to home in on, it's definitely communication skills. So that's um, something to work for uh, in 2019. Alex, um, yes. was part of the communication skill problem a language problem or just a reticence for the 
in turn to engage uh, with whoever they were speaking with? Sure, that, that's a great question. So it wasn't a language barrier or, or issue or problem. It was basically that fluency, uh, just practice of dealing and interacting with different management styles, different people, uh, different levels of um, you know executive or junior or with the receptionist, so on and so forth. So that was key. And Can so it's just a matter of, of practice. I find it interesting that one of the lowest levels is communication uh, with coworkers. You would, I would think that that would be um, on the highest level, unless uh, especially with other interns. Sure. But and I, well, my colleagues can chime in, but historically what we've seen is that with our interns, they're just very shy. And so it takes more than four weeks to come out, out of that shell and really to start interacting with their coworkers and, and their peers. So would, it, would it help if in the future you did this kind of analysis uh, a couple of weeks in and then at the end to see if there was any movement with experience? I concur. That, that can definitely be done. I think that, that's a great idea. For the second and third years, for our repeaters, it's a much higher mm -hmm. rate. Yeah, they're right. more comfortable right. in that job and boom, they're ready to go and they jump in. Everybody knows each other. So right? we want the repeaters to come back. Right. So it's all about practice, and uh, just to pick back what David just cited, uh, it's true. So we had, um, for example, Ryan, Ryan Ecker. This is your second time uh, in the internship, and also at the police station. So I, I think there's that, that fluency, that uh, familiarity with with um, the police department and, and the coworkers. So, right. So then we asked a, a couple of more questions, um, recommendations on the interviewing session. So. You know, employer said, which we're, we're not surprised, says it was just a little long this year, but not sure if you can do anything about it. It just means that the program is growing. And as a matter of fact, it did grow. We went from 15 interns to 19. So um, the time allowed for the speed interviewing did increase about a minute and a half or so. So uh, employers did, did actually feel the time uh, difference. Longer time to interview students who are interested in working here. Overall, an interview time was too long, two hours. It's true. So this is something that we could go back to the drawing board and, and see how we could we could fix and just streamline the whole system. So now recommendations for the four-week internship. A couple of quotes. The process of the program is seamless and efficient. Longer, four weeks is just too short. We would love to have this program be more than four weeks, honestly. It's, uh, it's just too short. It, it's a blink of an eye. Maybe an orientation day before starting, that's a fantastic idea. A joint event with the interns and their departments. I'm totally pleased and I'm considering keeping our intern employed for additional hours after the internship program is completed. His work is impeccable. Another question that we asked, based on your experience this year, would you be inclined to participate next year? 100% said yes. As you can see, this has been the eighth year, and each has not every year. There's really four parts to this wonderful internship that make it work. Starts with the town supporting it totally, 100%, which is just wonderful. Um, the second part, I think you heard mentioned, the Salvation Army provides a space for us to have this wonderful uh, activity. In past years, we also had it at the Carver Center. Uh, the third part is the employers. There's no way we would have this kind of experience, and the idea was to have it in the government sector, in the private sector, and in the not-for-profit sector. No way we would have that without the employers, and then certainly the interns taking the risk of putting themselves in situations that are new um, because they know going forward that, that that is a good thing. So in in addition to the information tonight, we'd like to recognize and thank the employers. And so at this time, uh, Mr. Supervisor, if I ask you to come forward, um, and as I call the uh, employers who are here tonight, and thank you so much for coming, might I ask you to come up um, and receive a certificate of recognition from town supervisor. And the Burns Advisor Group. This is the fun part of the job. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's been criticized. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. And I guess if any employer would like
like to say something, but we're always happy to do that. Uh, Dave, we kept it within budget, so it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Joy and Families Forever.
a special thank you to Alex and to Greg and to Dave for giving life to this program and keeping it going. And, and I want to also thank the council for allowing us to grow the program this year because it was your support that made that possible.
I just want to invite you to know this is on television. Paul Garrison and Fermi Firetown. Hopefully he hears this and he knows what it is. You gotta get your word out somehow. You can take a copy of this when this goes on the web. You know, just cut and paste it and send it to him. You know, hopefully. Um, but otherwise, I had a really good time. I had like I feel like everybody was my boss. I really did. Like I was being sent here, sent there. Everybody was trying to grab me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like, I, 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 like I worked seven and a half hours a day. I barely had enough time to get any real work done. I got there. Like I, sometimes I forgot to almost take my lunch. They were like, "Oh, you gotta go take lunch." I was like, "Oh, really? It's that time again already?" Got a so much work. I mean, of course, we got a lot of work. Employers, whether the government, non for profit, or private, uh, and all, all of the teenagers who participated. The one thing that strikes me more than anything else is how enthusiastic everybody was, both the employers and, and, and the kids. And it's remarkable how many have come back, how many employers want them back, don't want to let them go. Uh, this is a mark of a really successful program. The idea is to get young adults into the employment world, and we did that, and you did that. And it, this is a tremendous success. And I want to thank all the members of the council. Um, and this year, um, we were asked for some additional funds for additional um, students to be employed and we didn't even hesitate because we know this program is a terrific program and uh, and we hope that it continues a long time the only drawback that I see is if all of these <laughs> students are coming back to the employers I mean where's the room for the new ones right we need to get more employers that's the key and anybody watching this 
should call our office uh, at the town or send us an email and say, we are interested in participating next year because every employer who sees this should understand that they're getting good people that may become ultimately permanent employees or, or if not permanent, at least for uh, the time that the kids are, are here locally in school or, or in college locally. So I just want to make that pitch to anybody who's seeing it. And I want to thank everybody once again who participated in this program. It's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful experience for us. And I'm sure, and as you said, it's a wonderful experience for you. So thank you all. <laughs>
mission to uh, start our Eagle Scout project in Crawford Park to build two bocce ball uh, courts by the um, soccer field. Well, that's something I think we know that we're interested in. Yep. Do you have your scout leader here? Yes, I am. Do you want to introduce? Do you want to describe it? Do you have any pictures? Um, we or is that going to come down the line? Come, that's going to come down. Come down the line. Okay. Um, but uh, the core will be uh, regulation size, and regulation size is uh, 91 feet by 13 feet long. Each and court, but there will be two. Yes, there will be two, yeah. And each core will be side by side by where the soccer field is at Crawford Park. Yeah. Um, really, other than that, um, the core will be, will be digging down about a foot, and just filling it in, putting artificial turf on top, and uh, yeah, that's really the bulk of the project. And there are going to be sides? Uh, yes, wooden sides. Wooden sides. Is it going to be like railroad tie size or sides or made of railroad ties, or what material are you planning on? Um, just regular, like, uh, what? You're going to be using six by uh, six by. It's six by uh, what is two by six two by six uh, mm -hmm. planks. Mm -hmm. Okay. They'll just spike them in, yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't think we have a problem with that, do we? No. 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 We'll, we'll have to work with our um, our uh, field people. I'm not exactly who whether it'll be uh, um, GPS or or uh, Zika whatever and um, possibly the town engineer uh, making sure that we design the project properly you know that we have drawings and that we use appropriate materials uh, do you have any time frame for when you'd like to do this um, yeah we would starting we would uh, do it in um, early Uh, we would start early October, mm -hmm. and we would finish around mid-November. Okay. That's the approximate time frame. Okay. I'm looking forward to playing bocce on it. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you guys for choosing our park for your Eagle Scout program. It's going to be really wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Great idea. Thank you, Mr. Acevedo. Now comes a highlight. <laughs> How are you going to beat that? <laughs> now we're going to talk about the Town of Rye audit. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> you know, we present a lot at schools, and usually they have, you know, uh, stuff for, the, you know, the students and, and honors and everything, and then everybody leaves. So, you know, I feel honored that we're able to clear out a room this, uh, <laughs> this quickly. Uh, you can hear the the crickets. Um, so I'm Scott Oling. I'm one of the partners at uh, O'Connor Davies. I'm here tonight with Jeff Shaver, who is the actual engagement partner for the audit of the town of Rye. And so we're here tonight uh, to present the results of the audit that we did for the fiscal year that ended back on December 31st of 2017. You must be ready to start the new one then, right? Almost. <laughs> it seems like that. Um, so Jeff's going to, you know, basically take you through. We have a, a quick uh, PowerPoint presentation for you to give you some of the highlights of what happened financially. But basically, I'm just. Uh, do you have that up? Yes. So Jeff's going to, you know, take you through the numbers part. I just want to basically say that what we've done is uh, the audit report has a what's known as a clean auditor's opinion or an unmodified opinion, and that basically says that, that we believe that the numbers that we're about to, to go over with you fairly present what happened uh, in the town financially uh, for the year ended December 31st, 2017. So with that, I turn it over to Jeff. Thank you, Scott. Um, I'll just be going briefly through the, the PowerPoint presentation here. Uh, 
a brief agenda, I'll just go through some required communications related to the audit, and then I'll dive right into the meat um, of the, the numbers, so to speak, uh, go through the general fund revenues and expenditures, um, talk about the general fund fund balance, and cap off with some debt service summaries. So just a little bit about the financial statements. They are the responsibility of management, um, and management's, uh, management's responsible for selecting and implementing appropriate accounting policies, fairly presenting the statements in, in accordance with U.S. GAAP, establishing effective internal controls and compliance with laws, regulations, and provisions of contracts and agreements, providing all information to the auditors that we asked for, and also uh, setting a proper tone at the top. Our responsibilities are to communicate um, any fraud or illegal acts that were noted during the audit. I'm happy to say there were none. Um, we've encountered no significant difficulties in, in the conduct of our audit. Um, report any uncorrected differences. That means adjustments to the books and records that we felt needed to be made that were not made. We had none of those. So everything that we felt needed to be uh, recorded was recorded. And we had no disagreements with management. In terms of actual deliverables, um, we have the financial statements themselves, uh, which includes the independent auditor's report, which, as Scott mentioned, was the unmodified opinion or the clean opinion. Uh, there's a separate justice court audit, which gets filed, and a required communications to those charged with governance, which is part of what I'm talking about right now. Um, into the general fund, um, the heart of the numbers, this is a general fund summary of revenues and expenditures compared to budget. The first column is the original budget. The final budget encompasses any transfers or amendments during the year. The next column is actual revenues and expenditures. And the fourth column is the variance between the final budget and the actual expenditures. When the budget adopted, it was anticipated $2,959,000 would be collected. Actual revenues for the year were $2,795,000. That's a variance between the budget and actual of 100, approximately $165,000. I'll get into some of the details on the next slides. On the expenditure side of the budget, it was anticipated $2,989,000 would be spent. Actual expenditures were just slightly over that, $3,010,000. Other financing sources and uses are other items defined in the accounting standards that, that are not expenditures or revenues. Um, in this case, it's uh, premiums on the debt that was issued in 17, and also transfers to other funds, which in this case is a transfer to your capital fund. The difference between the two, the difference between revenues, expenditures, and other financing sources and uses brings me down to a net change in fund balance of $46,000. So the general fund fund balance went from $4,856,000 at the beginning of the year to $4,809,000 at the end of the year. <coughs> Keep in mind, when the budget was adopted, you'll see in the first column, $180,000, the budget was adopted in anticipation of utilizing some of your fund balance. So you anticipated utilizing, taking down your fund balance by that $180,000. Because actual revenues and expenditures in the aggregate were better than that, your fund balance only came down by $46,000. So that's really the, the overall picture of what happened in the general fund throughout the year. You anticipated. 180,000 use of fund balance, it was only 46,000. So at the end, everything, the way everything came out, it was better than better than anticipated. And that's uh, a good thing. Yeah. And at the end of the year, that's that's your ending fund balance, 4,809,000. On uh, next slides, we have some just a few details. This is a little more detail on the revenues. Um, you'll see the the numbers on the bottom match the previous uh, slide 2,959 on the budget, 2,795. Some of the key line items for the town is other tax items. Um, that is uh, interest and penalties on real property taxes. As you know, you collect property taxes for not only the town but also other municipalities uh, within the town. So the, the interest and penalties is is a significant um, revenue source for the town. Uh, gain on sale of tax acquired property when you take ownership of property, you, uh, you, you you sell it and that generates revenue. And that's the 1,108,000, the second, second line on this slide. 
And the other major source I'll point out is state aid. Uh, within that state aid is, is the mortgage tax revenue, um, which is required to be put in state aid by New York State. It, I understand it's not really what you consider It doesn't state make aid. any sense, yes. right? Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, that's the one million one fifty six. You have mortgage tax in there of about eight hundred thirty five thousand, a significant source for the town, and per capita state aid of three hundred twenty two thousand. So those uh, those two line items make up the bulk of your your revenue sources for the year. I will also point out uh, twenty sixteen revenues were three million six hundred seventy one. You'll see the decrease in other tax items. It's because there were certain properties sold that had been acquired for back taxes in 2016, and that didn't happen again in 17. So that counts for that, that fluctuation. We're hoping to have that in 18 now. Sure, it's, it's one of those items that it's good when it happens, um, but it doesn't happen every year. So you have to keep in mind when it does happen, it's usually not gonna happen every year. Uh, this is a detail on the expenditure side of the budget. You'll see the original budget, 2,989,000. Um, actual expenditures, three million ten thousand. The the largest expenditure category is the general government support, which is where most of the town's department fall into: the supervisors' department, the law department, um, the assessors' department. Um, most of the town's functions fall fall within that category. The increase for the year uh, from 2016 it was one million eight fifty three. It went up to 1990000 Most of that was in the law department, as you have to defend against tax, tax tertiary cases. So that's a, always a significant cost to the town. Um, employee benefits, of course, is related to the, the services provided by the employees within that function. And that's the state retirement, that's, um, that's FICA tax, and that's health insurance and, and those similar type items. This is a little bit of, just a little bit of history, um, five-year history on the expenditure side of the budget. You've, you can see in 2017, it was three, just about $3 million. If you go back to 2013, you were at 2.9. So if you just draw a straight line over the five years, your expenditures haven't moved a tremendous amount. It did um, go, up and go up a little bit in 14, down again in 15, but now you're just over where you were five years ago. So your, your expenditures have uh, maintained somewhat a steady level over the last five years, which is a good thing to say. This is a five-year fund balance history for the town. Um, you can see, if you look at the bottom, the bottom line, total general fund fund balance at the end of 17, 4,809,000. Um, five years ago, it was 2.5 .5 million. So there has been some um, significant improvement over the last five years um, in the total fund balance of the town. And then right now, um, the most important number is generally the unassigned number about, at about three million. And that's the, the funds that are for use at the discretion of the town council as they deem it necessary. Um, Jeff, one, one question. Um, we are carrying very large fund balances uh, compared to 2013. The unassigned balance was 1.8 million in 13 and it's 3 million now. Is, that, is there any problem with the state controller saying that we're carrying uh, too much in fund balance or are we within appropriate guidelines? As a percentage of your budget, it, it, is, it is a healthy percentage. The thing that's important to the town of Rye and you're very unique um, in this county, I think probably the most unique in that you're, you're, you're a tax collecting entity for the other municipalities. Your portion of the, that total levy is very, very small. It's less than a quarter of a percent. And the key thing to keep in mind is you have to make those municipalities whole um, for whatever taxes aren't collected on their behalf. So there's a cash outflow, if you will, for that every single year. And I think if you ask your comptroller this question, he would say, I, I need, I really need, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> I need, not, Dave, maybe, you want so I just thought I'd needy. throw that out there. <laughs> I, I, think, I think there's, there's something unique about the town of Rye in, the, in that just to, just the unique circumstances that it's in that justifies having uh, more than the standard guidelines, what you hear is 10% or 20%. All right.
um, just to cap everything off. That's the general fund I, I went through kind of in summary form. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is um, the debt service. Uh, the town issued significant debt in 2017. You'll see um, 7381000 dollars at um, what appears to be a very favorable interest rate, 3%. Um, uh, previous to 17, the debt outstanding was only for the uh, Rye Town Park roof renovations, which was issued at 658000 There's a small amount outstanding there of 225000 So clearly this new debt is um, the, the bulk of your debt service load. Uh, down on the bottom section of this uh, page is the debt service principal and interest that will be due uh, within 2018 and, and future years. You'll see um, your debt service requirements for 18 will be uh, just about 625000 And I think um, I think it was less than 100000 in 17. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're already aware. I just want to point out that um, the debt service requirements at when you should the bond will, will go up in 2018. Why, why is there a difference between the original issue amount and the principal amount on the bottom? Does so the original issue amount um, goes back to 2010. Okay. So you've been making principal payments since then. Okay. Um, and that on the Rye Town Park roof, um, you issued 658,000. You're down to 225. You're, you've been paying that down. Um, on the second bond, the new bond, it matches because you haven't made any payments yet because it's brand new. So the two together on the right side, 7,606,000, mm -hmm. um, matches the principal outstanding on the bottom, 7 million. So, so the interest that we're paying per year is the two bonds. So 22 yeah. would be the interest due on those two bonds in 2018. Jeff, maybe, maybe uh, Davey can answer this question better, but didn't we also have a, uh, a serial bond, or if not a serial bond, a ban for bridges that, uh, yes. that was also... Um, on our uh, financial statement? Yes, I believe you do. Um, you paid that down, I believe, with this bond. It was right. it was at $1.7 right. million, and the right. proceeds of this bond was new money and right. $1.7 million to pay that down. So at December 31st, 2017, you currently have no bond anticipation notes. Right. And there is no other... Um, long-term debt other than the bonds at, at this point in time. Okay. And we did that because the Crawford interest, well, well, the interest, rate, the interest rate, well, yeah. rate for the ban, yeah. Well, no, we had to, the ban had been rolled over, and you can roll it over up to seven years, and when you hit the seventh year, you have to issue a serial bond. So because we were issuing the serial bond for mostly the Crawford Park improvements, then we rolled that into that serial bond. So, um, because previously it was, a, it was a bond anticipation note, now it's a serial bond. And so as of the end of the year, um, the 7,381,000 isn't all spent. I mean, the 1.7 million had been spent in a previous year as you issued that bond anticipation note. You currently have about 5 million left to spend on that bond. So there's still, still work. Um, before I before I complete, I just want to thank the supervisor and the supervisor's office, um, Dave Burns, Comptroller, the M Group, everybody. Um, you know, it takes a lot of work to get all this together, and it, um, it you know I just have to, to thank them for all their hard work and the efforts. They you were living in our offices for a <laughs> long time, but I think that the uh, the re order report is a good one. If there's any questions, I'd be happy no. to. Questions? To. Thank you very questions? much. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, uh, we have a resolution to accept. Doesn't mean we have to agree with it. We accept the audit report. <laughs> um, may I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Call the roll, please, Hope. Councilperson Baxson? 
Yes. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Baxter? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good Thank you. Thank you for coming. We have our errant council member, <laughs> Tom Nardi, I'm coming probably place. from a, a dog competition. No, it's actually the uh, Porchester Redbrook Chamber of Commerce golf outing that's been ah. planned. They had uh, canceled it back in uh, June and rescheduled it for today. So I was uh, there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, first resolution tonight oh first public comment I'm sorry are there any public comments on non agenda items we have to share yeah, sure. <laughs> sorry no, no, uh, no, seeing no, none um, we're on the resolution section um, our um, uh, one of the members of the Board of Assessment Reviews term is up and I have a resolution uh, before us to appoint Randy Rabinowitz, Randy Rabinowitz to the Board of Assessment Review uh, for the next term. Um, Randy submitted her resume. She's currently a uh, member of our assessment task force uh, and has become very familiar with the assessment process. She's a uh, broker in um, Mamaronic, and this is for the Mamaronic position, meaning the Rye Neck position. Um, as most of you are aware, we have two members from Porchester, two members from Rybrook, and one member from Rye Neck. And I consulted with Mayor Tom Murphy of the Village of Mamaroneck, and he agrees wholeheartedly with the appointment of Randy Rabinowitz. And obviously, I've, I've um, consulted with members of the council and especially with our Rye Neck representative, uh, <laughs> Lindsay Jackson. So um, I'd like a motion and a second. I'll make a motion. Oh. <laughs> I'll second. Thank you. If there are no further comment, uh, please call the roll. I hope. just wanted to say how excited I am to have. There Randy. is further comment. There is further <laughs> comment. Oh, okay. To have Ms. Rabinowitz um, join the assessment review board. She is a very active member of the community both in Mamaroneck and the town of Rye and um, she's going to do great so right. very Thank excited Good. call the roll please hope councilperson Nardi yes councilperson Jackson yes councilperson Axelrod yes councilperson Baxter yes and supervisor Zuckerman yes since you're here Tommy the call of the roll takes a lot longer yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, the next three items are for um, uh, awarding the bids for uh, HVAC services, fire protection services, um, and plumbing services for the Crawford Mansion renovation. Um, this is the second time it's gone out to bid on some of these, and I think the third time on one of them. Third, yeah. Um, the plumbing. Um, we have endeavored to rebid when we felt that the bids came in too high, and all of the prices on the rebid items are substantially lower than the original bids that came in. So, even though I wish it was half of what it was, um, we're dealing with reality. So, first is the plumbing services, um, which is going to VFR Contracting, uh, located in Briarcliff Manor. And um, may I have a motion and a second for that, please? I'll make the motion. I'll, I'll second. I just want to say that, that um, before we go on to these, not only were the bids come in, but our architect, Gary G. and Francesco of Arconics, vetted each bid, called all of the references to make sure that the lowest bidder was, in fact, the lowest responsible bidder. So all the, um, the vetting was properly done by the architect. And I also want to acknowledge Debbie and the town staff for putting out, you know, the bids twice or yes. triplicate. Yeah. 
because it does take a lot of work and even just getting them out there, soliciting the bids. And hope, because hope is the one who has, she's the heavy lifter, the heavy lifter on these bids. Um, so we had a motion and a second. Please call the roll. We have a motion on that. Okay. Yeah, Jill, Jill seconded it. Jill seconded it. Okay. Councilperson Nardi? Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Baxter? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. And the next one is for uh, HVAC, heating, ventil ventilation, air conditioning. And the, um, the bid is being awarded to DJ Heating and Air Conditioning in Marlboro, New York. I think he's the only one who's not local. Um, may I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. Uh, call the roll, please. Councilperson Nardi? Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Baxter? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. And the third one is for fire protection services. That's basically the sprinkler system in the mansion. And that is being awarded to all safe fire protection in um, Elmsford. So may I have a motion and a second for that? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Please call the roll. Councilperson Nardi? Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Baxter? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. Um, our last resolution is for painting services for the Continental Manor footbridge. Continental Manor footbridge is the one right behind Continental Manor. It's probably 25 feet long and uh, uh, we think it's in need of repair. Does anybody else want to, Tommy, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, it just, it's, it was replaced. It was replaced about eight years ago. It's just maintenance. The bridge is in, in sound shape. Um, due to one of the, I forget which hurricane it was, the, the bridge and the, um, the wall, um, the embankments around the wall, around the bridge had to be replaced. Um, it was a substantial re, uh, repair and replacement of the bridge. But it's just it's just general maintenance to repaint it, so it, we don't have it go in disrepair. All right, and the the uh, the the bid was awarded to A. G. Williams at the grand price of four thousand five hundred and seventy-five dollars. So, may I have a motion and a second? I'll make the motion. Second. Any other questions? Not. Please call the roll. Councilperson Nardi. Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Baxter? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Denise. Do you have an assessor's report? You don't have to have one. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, Honorable Supervisor and Council Members. The only eventful item I have to report. Um, is that the 2018 final assessment role was published and finalized on 9-14-18. There were no substantive changes from the tentative assessment role other than the Board of Assessment Review changes. And now we await the filing of the SCAR petitions and the Article 7 tax certs by the end of October. So we'll know where we fare after that. And um, I want to concur that I think Randy Rubinowitz will be a fine addition to the Board of Assessment Review team. Thank you. And that's it. All Good right. Evening, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave, anything on finance? This is just the, the report, the tax receivables report that's in, that's in your package. Uh, and uh, as we know, the town attorney, Jeff Bender, will be getting busy with collection on the NREM, but we have the new class of 18 that's joining the class of 17 that's in summer school. So we need to take care of the class of 17 before we start dealing with class of 18 because that $4 million uh, fund balance <coughs> is used to make the, the uh, taxes whole for all the municipalities and, and we are using all of that to, to do that. And um, the towns in Westchester County have to make the municipalities whole and the other counties in the state 
the county makes the municipalities whole for uh, uncollected taxes. So that's our that's our burden with cash flow, and that's why we got to keep monitoring the in rent properties. Uh, the, the other thing is is that uh, the town um, is scheduled to make wire transfer payments on the the uh, new. Um, bond payments uh, on Monday, October 1st. So they're scheduled to be made. So we're on schedule. Thanks, Dave. OK. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nick, do you have anything other than what's in, in here? No. OK. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to make you get up there, then. Thank you. No, no, what? No, you don't have to get up there, then. If everything is submitted. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a report from the Superintendent of Highways, which I just saw recently. Um, there's some photos from the Otter Creek wing wall, which I have no idea what a wing wall is. Tommy, what's so a wing wall? The wing wall is what helps support the, uh, the bridge. It's on the sides. So, and I guess I haven't been by there I did talk to John um, the other day, and he had he was here a couple weeks ago, and he took some pictures, which he sent. Um, th but this is the first time I'm seeing the pictures. I didn't get a chance to see them. Well, so, I think I think um, we should probably send our engineer out to take a look at this. Then yeah. I think you may have okay. already called him, correct? Yeah, the boulders are starting to separate. That's holding up. That's holding up the. Over here, this is holding all the earth back, so it doesn't get washed into the into the uh, into the creek. I spoke to John yesterday, and he sent over the photos, and he said that they there may be some maintenance that has to be done there, yeah. and he was going to speak with Dan Sarnoff. Okay. And this this was taken before the storm yesterday. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This was taken about a week or two ago, I believe he said he was here, but he was only here for a few days. And then he had to go he had to go back to Arizona. The storm was a good test. Yeah. Yes. This so is when you first come over the uh, when you first go onto the creek, it's on to the left hand side. Okay, so then our town engineer needs to evaluate that along with the uh, um the prospect of having a sewer pipe put over the Otter Creek Bridge, because, um, as you know, that's an issue. Yes, but that's one of the two bridges that we're totally responsible for. Yep. Yeah. So um, that's what we need to have him look at. Yeah. I don't think we need to have the Marinick look at. It. I mean, they can do it as a matter of courtesy for us. Yeah. Um, but it, it's our responsibility. I yeah. Mean, I just know that this area yesterday, with all that rain so quickly got hit so I think a lot of areas got yeah. hit. yeah so I'm just my first thought is if it's I not mean, good now <laughs> I, I can go by tomorrow afternoon I got um I actually have a class in the morning I have to go to and in the afternoon I'll be around so I can take a ride by and I'll take some uh, up to I'll take pictures of it okay. and I'll send an email out you could always try to swing by too because it's okay right yeah there. all right thank you um a town clerk's report, a submitted hope. Anything yes, to it's add? submitted. Um, just a community report. <laughs> uh, not this coming Sunday. The following Sunday, which is October 7th, is the Columbus Day Parade. And you're all invited to march and, <laughs> and the public to come and view the parade. A lot of work goes into that. Mm. And, and we, the, we have a grand marshal. Oh, Here yes. Can I announce? Announce? <laughs> our very own Ann Capisi is our Grand Marshal this year. So Very nice. If everybody can make that, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And when is the dinner? Friday the night? The dinner is Friday, October 5th at okay. the Westchester Burger. Which is a week from tomorrow. Right. So if anyone would like to attend, they could give me a call. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jeff, a report from you. Um, because you and I speak not only every day, but several times a day. Let's bring us up to date in what we're doing with our tax cert defense and our in rem attacks. Well, the, the in rem 
uh, class of 2017. Uh, the petition has been drafted and the petition has been filed in court. I'm just waiting on a few um, title searches to come back to see who to serve Okay, this petition on. And the, um, the redemption date is going to be February 1st, which is the date by which um, you know, people have to pay or else we'll proceed with the foreclosure. So the, the process is in place for that? Right. Uh, how long does it take from February 1st until we actually uh, get the deed, assuming that uh, there's no contest? A uh, matter of weeks. Okay. On the uh, tax cert um, front, uh, we've had some good news uh, lately. We've had, uh, I'm thinking back, about two or three discontinuances or settled cases. So we're making progress on that. Within the next uh, month, within the next few weeks, we're going to see the new crop of tax cert cases come through. So the cases that are pre-existing the next year, will, will they'll file, and um, I'll keep the, the council updated as to you know whether we've grown um, appreciably or or whether it's a more of a lean year. Hoping the latter. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, I'd like, we have a, a, a personnel matter that I'd like to discuss very briefly with. Before we do that, I wanted to make a couple of announcements. We have yes. uh, some events coming yeah. up. Okay. Do you want to talk oh, about the yes. Um, the Rye Town Park, actually, um, Debbie and Sarah Suma are working on putting together the fall festival. That'll be October 20th. Um, in fact, I'm emailing out the flyer now to some people who I know are interested um, we had a great thanks to Sarah's work pumpkin painting last year so now we are expanding upon that we're doing pumpkin painting um, there's going to be a pinata a petting zoo you can tell me are you going to bring zoo. the puppies <sighs> wow well <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> I, I could bring a couple I probably could bring a couple yes Yes, face painting, a hayride, which they had last year, and a bouncy castle. So you can put the puppies on the bouncy castle. Yeah, I don't think that'll work too well. That's yeah. great. The cider and donuts, mm -hmm. yes. So it's we, have a, uh, we also have, um, we had two community days of service for 9-11 mm -hmm. um, this month. Uh, teams of community volunteers got together and removed invasive vines from the trees at Crawford Park, and we had such a good time, and it was so successful that we have scheduled another one, and that will be on Sunday, October 14th, from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet up on our website, and volunteers are welcome to come. Please let us know if you have gloves or if you need gloves, and we'll be waiting there to uh, free a few more trees of invasive vines. Great. Anything from the council? Um, and I believe also Barley's on the Beach is still open, right? Um, for another day or two. For another day or two. So if you haven't tried it out, go. Could I just mention one thing? Sure. So uh, the Rye Town Sustainability Committee um, has gotten together our next event. And I just wanted to announce it tonight. You'll see flyers. Um, throughout the villages, but um, the title is Electric Vehicles, The Future is Here. Uh, we have Ron Kamen from Sustainable Westchester. Um, he is going to come and give a, a talk about um, clean transportation. He does clean transportation for Sustainable Westchester um, and is really passionate about this subject. And considering that we're putting electric ports in Crawford Park, it seemed to be a timely issue. So this will be October 11th at 7 o'clock, and it will be at the Carver Center. Um, so you'll see these around, but just wanted to make sure everybody knew about it. Terrific. Tommy's puppies will not be at the electric car. Stay away from the electric no. car. <laughs> 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 um, no, I just said that today we had the uh, the Portchester Rybrook Chamber uh, converse, uh, golf outing, uh, which Ken Manning and Mike Burley worked very hard, and the rest of the chamber board. Um, had a really nice uh, golf hunting at the Griff. It, it was a little soggy, but the weather held out. And then we had a nice dinner at T&J's, and that's the reason why I was late. 
But it was it was a good time by everybody. Too much information. You Too much information. Just TJ's over us. We, yeah, we've been ditched for <laughs> yeah. TJ's. Yeah. So that's about it. All right, great. Joe, anything? Not a lot. Of nope. Okay. <laughs> um, Call for the executive session. You know, we can do that informally after a long time. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm gonna have a motion to. I don't have anything tonight except what I've already said. Um, just to say that. We've got all our bids in on Crawford Park, and the, hopefully the work will start soon on the interior. So uh, thank you, everybody, and a motion to adjourn. Make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.